What's up y'all, Rich Slayton here. A bit of a different video today. I've been doing these shorts that give you quick tips on how to play different interactions, decks for Clash Royale. Well, a lot of people asked about P.E.K.K.A. Bridge Spam. That's what we're doing today. We're bringing on Jax, very talented player, currently top 100 on Global Ladder, to really break down some basic key tips on how to play P.E.K.K.A. Bridge Spam and elevate your game with this deck. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, comment below with whatever decks maybe you want to see us break down and give some gameplay tips for, and of course use code RICH in the Supercell shop, whether you're playing Clash Royale, Brawl Stars, Clash of Clans, whatever, use code RICH before you make purchases, that helps me out a whole ton. Let's waste no more time and jump into a, a very fun video today, breaking down P.E.K.K.A. Bridge Spam with Jax. Alright guys, here we are with Jax CR. Jax currently, as you can see, number 94 in the world as we're recording this video. And that's with, uh, not with P.E.K.K.A. Bridge Spam right the second, but with a Bridge Spam variation. And you can go to Jax's YouTube page, youtube.com slash JaxCR, for a ton of Bridge Spam and P.E.K.K.A. Bridge Spam content. Jax, let's jump right into it. Uh, it's P.E.K.K.A. Bridge Spam, 3.9 average elixir, 12 elixir cycle all the way around. A classic deck. Um, obviously was around before Magic Archer. Magic Archer became a big part of it. Let's go through a few of these basics of things that you want to learn that you need to master if you're trying to improve from average to good play with P.E.K.K.A. Bridge Spam. For sure. So my first tip here is that you always want to see if your opponent will make the first play when with P.E.K.K.A. Bridge Spam. So that can mean waiting a few seconds after you hit 10 Elixir just to see if they'll make a play and give you an opportunity to use it on your attack. Now, if they if they don't give that first play, right? If they're waiting for a long time, at what point do you pull the trigger? Normally, I will pull the trigger around 240 to 235 in the game, just because this deck works really well in single elixir, and you can always push later into single elixir. So it's good to get the game moving then with like a bandit or a ghost behind your king tower or a zap on their tower. All right, so that's number one: is try to get them to make the first move, and if they don't then you can get your cycle at least in place, and they'll probably respond to a bandit or ghost most likely. Uh, number two, you mentioned this one to me, and it's a term that you coined as overkilling. Explain that here. So overkilling is when you could counter a troop or defend a troop with one of your troops, or you can make a good elixir trade, but you choose to make a bad or worse elixir trade so you can get a better counter push. For instance, if you band it on a Valkyrie and make her dash, she will counter the Valkyrie, but if you play her ghost as well, you can preserve HP on both troops and get a more threatening counter push on the tower. And you put some some pressure on it. Uh, there's a few combinations, I'm sure, that, that work for that, but Bandit and, and Ghost together, is that one of your favorites? Yes, definitely one of my favorites. Uh, two cheap, really threatening bridge cards. The Ghost is invisible, and that Bandit has the infinitely annoying dash mechanic. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, t speaking of cards that get a lot of value in this deck, number three on your list was Protecting the Magic Archer. It wasn't always in this deck before Magic Archer. I believe it was Minions, if I remember correctly, in the old version of P.E.K.K.A. Bridge Spam. Uh, why is the Magic Archer so important in this deck, and when is the Magic Archer so important? The Magic Archer can really just be that card that gives you infinite value. If your opponent doesn't have a big spell or a quick answer to him, he can sit on your side of the map, piercing through all their units for 30 seconds, a minute on end, you can cycle multiple of him, and he can also finish off the game with that clutch damage at the bridge. He's just a really important card as well, not only for getting value, but also for baiting out spells so you can attack. And he's just very valuable in this deck, mostly more valuable than minions. Now, you told me that there are some matchups where Magic Archer is how you win the game. Can you briefly tell me a couple of those matchups for the viewers? Yeah, for sure. So one of those matchups is Ice Bow. They don't have a good spell for their rocket, or they don't have a good spell for the marcher. They have the rocket. And he can really just sit on your side as well as Log Bait. And matchups just where they have generally more baity units and they don't have a big spell. Usually when they have a big spell, you're going to be using him as a bait more often. So protect your Magic Archer. Now, uh, number four on your list is also a Magic Archer tip, and it's about when to play Magic Archer at the bridge for that extra tower damage. Right, so we've seen Marcher Tornado decks in the past, which could literally just kill entire pushes by NATOing it back. You don't have that luxury in this deck, so you need to be careful. Normally, my rule of thumb is I don't Marcher the bridge unless I'm up Elixir, or, I can, or I'm confident that I can defend their counter push off of it. Because throwing four Elixir at the bridge can sometimes be too much of an overcommit, and you could lose the game off of them. Yeah, I mean, we've actually seen games in CRL where someone Magic Archers at the bridge early in single Elixir. I remember once when, when LC opted it. Magic Archer at the bridge, too early, gets piercing damage, but turns into a big counter push the opposite direction. So I want to be careful of those Magic Archers. And finally, this is a big one, and one that I've been playing this deck a little bit lately as well, and uh, I was glad you brought it up when we were talking beforehand. 
defensive battle rams. You know, battle ram, you think of it as your offensive card, and most win conditions you don't think of on the defensive side as much. But battle ram specifically does have a lot of defensive utility. For sure. So it can kite units to the other side of the lane, and it's slow at first and then speeds up. And so it can be really valuable against units like Mini P.E.K.K.A. or Elite Barbarians when you don't have your P.E.K.K.A. or whatever Anderson you want. You can kite them to the other lane and begin defending them with both towers. And you can also use it to kind of like tank with Princes or with Golem pushes. You can use it to hold off HP for your P.E.K.K.A. Or if you don't have that Bandit or P.E.K.K.A. in cycle, you can battle him and counter that Prince for no damage. And it's just very valuable on defense and has a lot of underrated value there. Yeah, a lot of opportunities. Now let's say, uh, Jax, that someone's watching this and go, I already know all these things. I already do all these things. What's the, the big thing that would be the next step to go from good P.E.K.K.A. Bird Spam play to great P.E.K.K.A. Bird Spam play? In my opinion, it revolves around the Zap. And you might be thinking I'm crazy for that, the Zap. You just use it to Zap the Skarmy or the Bastard, the Skeleton, get all that value out of them. But you can actually get so much more value with the Zap. For instance, if your P.E.K.K.A. hits the Bandit, she survives at 1 HP, but if you Zap, she dies immediately. If your Bandit dashes onto a Barbarian or one of the Wizards, and you zap, then she kills it on the next hit, which can really surprise your opponent. Just interactions like that can really change up the course of the game along with its reset ability and help you break through where you couldn't have before. I mean, that's one of those things where you talk about going from level 1 to level 2 to level 3, kind of changing your, elevating your game, mastery of those interactions. And of course, this deck has plenty of things like that, whether it be the, the bandit on Mega Knight, which, uh, you know, gets used occasionally, but uh, we were talking about that before we recorded. Uh, it's a kind of a, f a fun little piece of tech, or using your knowing your EWIS interaction. Lots of ways in which you can elevate your game here. But the Zap, that's one of those ones that I think a lot of people will be interested to hear about. And uh, of course, you were watching some of those. Oh, over here, watching some of those over here as we're talking about it. Great. So let's go ahead, uh, Jax. Let's go ahead and play uh, a game on ladder. You're currently, like I said, top 100. So let's go ahead and get in there and show them some live gameplay. Sounds good. I'm ready. Let's get that gameplay sound on. We did find a match here. Um, do you, I mean, it's still early season. I'm guessing you don't know who GZX is. Actually, I think this is a top ladder Golem player. I believe he's a top 35 finish with Golem. And he's much higher than me. He's about 100 higher. So this will be a very nice win. And, oh, there's a mini peck at the bridge. So we waited for that bandit. I'm just going to see if he's going to zap it. And it looks like he's not. So the bandit will fully counter. And she'll get a dash there. Wow. Which is really good. Cool. So forces yes, yes, out the baby, the, the baby dragon here. So my plan in a golem matchup is to use my Ewiz and Marcher to get immediate value on the baby dragon like that. That forced out seven elixir before, and now I can set it set up with a ghost and probably attack. So my intention here is going to be to continue to make him make weird plays like cycling his money, which he doesn't want to do that once the golem push. And I'm gonna counter attack with my supporting units once they've gotten their value. And you're gonna play into the same lane here as the golem. Um, not since he cycled his Ice Wizard, it'd be really hard for me to kill it, but yes, generally, if you have a support unit down, you want to be playing into the same lane. Alright, so here you go, you're going Battle Ram to the right-hand lane, he's leaking a little bit here and goes with the Mini P.E.K.K.A. in response. So right now, this is feeling like very, very classic for the Bridge Spam. You're making him make weird plays, as you said, and getting positive with your trades and kind of getting yourself a nice little advantage. Yeah, and that Zap was really clutch there. He's gonna activate his King, but it gives me some damage to start with, which is good. And we are able to prevent the Mini P.E.K.K.A. from smacking the Bandit and the Bomber from getting the value on her. So very good stuff there. This is one of the things that you talked about before we recorded, was uh, you don't want to play, you know, you, you know, waiting for your opponent to make a play, and you mentioned not wanting to give an early King Tower activation. Uh, those, those early, if you do end up cycling Bandit or Ghost, you said, before we recorded, that you want to do that uh, behind King Tower rather than at the bridge to not give away an easy King Tower activation. Definitely. If you go at the bridge, your opponent only has to bleed like one or two elixirs to get that King Tower activation, which can really mess you up late game. Against Golem here, what's probably going to happen is that I'm going to be getting a big counter push if I ever get a counter push, and we're going to be using that, and if King Tower activation probably won't matter too much. So Pekka should smack the mini Pekka there, and now we have a really big elixir damage. All right, so here we go. Pekka, Ghost, Cycling, Magic Archer way in the back. And he golems up, trapping that Night Witch there by the Princess Tower. But you've got this Magic Archer way, way low here to work yeah, on this back. Yeah, and this is perfect. Is Night Witch is now this? dead before he gets any value. And I can just ban at this. Even though Marcher dies, he gets such a big counter push. And the Pekka always smacks the Mini Pekka before the Mini Pekka smacks it. So this should be a huge counter push. Yeah, look at this. 
Wow. Wow. Pekka EU is are now splitting lanes here. Yes, so since he doesn't have his mini P.E.K.K.A. in cycle, I want to split lane, because if he does, then I would go same lane and overwhelm that mini P.E.K.K.A. But since he doesn't, we just want to split lane and uh, kind of make sure his defense can't be just uh, piled into one lane with a bunch of splash units. So in this case, you let the Magic Archer go down. How come? Um, it really just wouldn't have been worth it to support, because he could just quickly NATO it to his side of the map. And I could use my Eelas over here to be getting more value. We're going to get the Valorant connection, and I should be able to afford a P.E.K.K.A. here, which is going to basically defend the Golem, considering it's taking so much damage. So, me, I would be so tempted to poison those support troops right there, but you're more focused on the Golem than the support right now. Yes, so I would poison them. I like to poison them on defense. It's just much more... Uh, it just makes sure that I'm not going to lose the game by overcommitting on offense. And now we can just go for the Eelas. And since he's going to Lightning, that's fine. We'll just march it over here and keep it out of the way of the Baby Dragon. We still have a nice damage piece. So since he Night Witches, I'm going to pressure him immediately just so that he can't Golem without having to respond. And I think this should be alright. Yeah, he can, he's going to commit both the Ice Wizard and the Bomber. Now he can't Golem. Oh, actually, he can't. Wow. I'm just but the Night Witch goes in front. Like that. That's really great for you. And, he was, and I'm fine taking some damage on this tower over here by the mini P.E.K.K.A. If it even gets there. And then we can go battle ram and adapt just to make sure this mini P.E.K.K.A. restarted. And now we have another big counter push. That was really, really nice. That battle ram zap there. I was sitting there going, oh my god, is this going to... That I probably would have ended up with that being a throw in that moment. So here we go. P.E.K.K.A. down. Magic Archer not quite getting that connection. Final 30 seconds. Oh, Magic there Archer connects the opposite lane! March are going crazy there. There's the battle ram connection. Wow. 41 one to be poisoned. For those of you wondering, Poison Zap the 334, Poison Zap 264. So I need to make sure I get in there before I Poison Zap, but March or the Battle Ram bar hit it anyway. Yeah, uh, that was super duper clean. That was really, really clean, dude. And let's go see what kind of um, uh, let's go see what kind of trophies you get. Wait, did you get no trophies for that? No, I got plus 36. Let's go so now. Let's let's go check out and see where you are currently on the uh, on the leaderboard. Now that you after that one, it says you're still 94th. Is it not updated? It updated for me. I'm 78th now. 78th? Oh, come on. Let me see it. Let's see that 78th. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to see right here, is show off uh, where you are in the world right now. Well, it's still calling you 94 on mine for some reason. But uh, 78th ah. in the world right now. Um, so, dude, that was that was really, really clean. That The Battle Ram zap on defense uh, on that right-hand side against the, the Mini P.E.K.K.A. and the, um, and the, uh, the Bomber. That was the one where I was looking at that going like, okay, that's the that was that's where I would have I mean, first of all I would have thrown by poisoning the trying to get poison value on the bomber and the ice whiz on the princess tower rather than waiting for the other side. And then I would have thrown a second time uh, with that battle ram zap on defense. So that was I mean again, applause to you, man. That was a great game. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm go ahead. really nervous about poisoning on offense. I could just wait and get that value on defense along with my support and then counter push. The matchup is so good that everything that I need will fall into my hands as long as I'm passive and then go on counterattacks. And there we go. Now you can see 78 on the, on Global Ladder right now. Uh, Jax, really, really great. And I said it before, and I'll say it again. Um, if you're watching this right now, go subscribe to Jax on YouTube. The, the His link will be in the show notes below. It's youtube.com slash JaxCR uh, for... As you can see, brilliant Preka Bridge Spam player, really great videos, and as you guys heard here, and you may have seen me have seen him on CWA as well, uh, Jax explains things beautifully and really breaks them down well. So, uh, dude, thanks a lot. Really, really excited to have you on here, and um, this this I think this is going to end up being really great and, and teach people a lot about how to play uh, a really popular, really classic deck. Yeah, thank you for having me, man. It was very fun. Glad to help. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, trying to bring a little bit more education to some of you guys who are trying to improve and get involved in the competitive scene and P.E.K.K.A. Bridge Spam. Maybe it's up in the meta, maybe it's down in the meta, but guess what? It's never going away. If you haven't yet, don't forget to subscribe down below, uh, ring the bell for notifications, comment with other decks that maybe you want to see broken down with uh, some mastery tips for you, and I'll see you back here next time on the most fun place for Clash Royale Esports.